what we mean when we say serious. Often a great way to understand something is to consider its opposite. What is the opposite of being serious? The opposite of that is being whimsical, not planning, joking around to excess, being inclined to foolishness and horseplay, being childlike. That is what it is to not be serious. To be a serious man is to be goal-oriented, focused, thoughtful, contemplative, planning, observant. If you were ever to spend time with me socially, you'll notice I am always scanning the entire environment. And I know if, if something bad just started happening all of a the sudden, there was a ruckus or a melee or something popping off, uh, there's an exit right there. There are two exits there. This is the closest exit. There are five people on this side of me. There are 18 people in this area. There are only two persons here that could withstand me physically in combat. I mean, there's only two potential threats. Everyone else is a sheep. Huh? Yes, I'm scanning the entire environment. And you should be like that as a man. Why? Because if you can anticipate, then you can dominate. I'm never, ever, ever walking into a situation willing to lose. I only know about winning. I don't know nothing else. You hear me? I don't even like to do things that I'm not about to win at. Chick wants to invite me to go bowling. I'm good. No, thank you. I'm actually good at bowling, but not good enough. It's not worth my time anymore. So we understand of a functional definition of what it is to be a serious man. We also understand the position that a man has who he must be as an individual, which is a being who is looked to for guidance, a being who is looked upon as a provider, a being who is looked upon as a protector. And those are all very serious roles. And I have spoken previously on you know, the definition of a provider. People tend to limit this to that which is financial. It is deeper than that. And it is, it is even not even necessarily financial. By the way, shout out to the ballers. Baller alert. Mitchell writes, thank you for proceeding with this video topic. I greatly appreciate your commitment. Peace of the saints. Thank you very much. Peace of the saints. And that is a, another trait of being serious is being true to your word. Those who are not viewed as serious, you know, they're joking, always giggling. You really can't trust what they say now, can you? You can't take them seriously, so to speak. Khalil's question is here. He writes, I owe $256 for this first semester of college. Should I pay out of pocket or take out a $1,000 loan and use the refund for savings slash developing products? This is a good question. Number one, you should always be saving in general. Number two, uh, and this is something that a, a businessman told me when I was a youngster, and I really appreciated it. I did not fully understand it, but he said, actually, let me bring in two people. The, the first guy was an older Jewish fellow, and uh, I was volunteering at a gala, which is an event where a bunch of wealthy people go. They have a dinner. They spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars just to sit at a given table, and then they write checks for a good cause. A lot of ballers there, and I was serving drinks in a, a volunteer capacity. I was in my early twenties, and someone had offered me a tip. I said, "No, thank you." Now, mind you, I've never been in the service industry, and uh, I also was taught to be polite and helpful out of the kindness of my heart, based on who I am which is to say I've never done anything nice for someone to get a reward. I've done it because I viewed the other individual as a good person or in need of help or to express my own goodness, but never for a dollar. And when I was offered this tip and I'd never been offered a tip for anything in life, I was like, oh, no, no, I, I can't accept that. Now, mind you, this is a guy who's a multimillionaire trying to give me a tip. And I'm a young kid starving, essentially, in Baltimore, teaching impoverished black kids. If anybody deserved it or needed it, it was me. Jewish guy comes over to me. Says, hey, Mark, but I saw that guy offered you a tip. You refused the money. Why? And I explain, you know, I was raised this way. You don't need to, you know, accept money just for doing something good. He says, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. But check this out. Don't you ever refuse money. Now, you might say, Mark, do you listen to the old Jewish guy or do you listen to your grandmother? Well, let's consider. Uh, my grandmother comes from the lumpen class of the Southern Black, uh, who much of what they know is the result of generations being denied education. A people who came from recent enslavement, conversely, the Jewish fellow comes from 
uh, one of the most respected and affluent ethnicities in America and around the world and might know a thing or two. So I figured out like, you know, maybe some of the values I was taught as a young person or as a child might not be the right ones. So I, after that, I said, OK, um, number one, if someone wants to give me a gift, I accept the gift. If they want to give me a compliment, I accept the compliment. I honor their intention. And if they provide me a, uh, a token for my efforts, I will appreciate being compensated for what I've done. And that was very good advice that he gave me. And I'm thankful that he was uh, kind enough and you know, man enough and serious enough to give me such advice. I've benefited greatly from it. Now, still, I've not been in the service industries. I've not been in an industry where you get tips, but it was very educational. That was the first piece. The second piece from a businessman, he told me that, and now mind you, I've spent a lot of time developing technologies, and I've also been an inventor of technology. Let that be recorded as one of my true accolades in a world of internet fakers where you're dealing with a lot of preachers, salesmen, comedians, sophists. In my case, being a creator of technology, often these things are expensive, right? If you want to scale up a tech product around the world, you need significant uh, financing. And one thing I remember hearing from an investor and also a technologist, very successful one, is he said, anytime you can get access to capital, always take the capital. Generally speaking, if, if the terms are draconian, the interest rate is insane, of course, stay away from it. Things like personal loans, you want to stay away from it. So when you say you can take a loan, the question, is it a proper student loan? If it's a student loan, you're going to have a great interest rate, especially if it's a government back or a subsidized student loan. If it's a personal loan, those folks are really predatory and aggressive. Don't ever take a personal loan. Don't ever take a cash advance on a credit card. In fact, you probably shouldn't even have a credit card. And many cultures don't even really believe in credit cards. For example, uh, the Christians uh, don't believe in interest if they actually follow. The Muslims consider it usury or reba. The Jews don't charge it to one another, but they'll charge it to you, the non Jew. Uh, so that's an important thing to consider. And that is why, among the saints, we basically he, he put unsubsidized student loan. Oh, absolutely, Brett, take that, take that, and be responsible. And the reason I say that is the same reason that that businessman told me, which is to say, when you can get access to cash, take it because you can do something with cash. You can grow cash. Secondly, generally speaking, you're only offered access to capital when you are responsible, meaning you have a high credit score or you're in a unique situation such as you are, which is to say you're in university and you're being provided a, an opportunity for capital because our welfare state. Our Western society has decided that all the poor, the middle class and others should have access to capital to get education. And so you can you get to take advantage of that, even if you don't have great credit, because as a young person, you probably have not had time to establish credit. So you should absolutely take it. So that's answering the second part of your question. You should absolutely take the loan. Um, you should clear out your uh, your little two hundred fifty six dollar uh, bill and then you should do something intelligent with the remainder of the money saving it uh, is not necessarily intelligent in as much as you'd be losing money, right? Which is to say, say you have a remainder of uh, approximately $750 after you've taken out this loan. If you save it, you have inflation eating away at your money. And the money that you owe on the loan has an interest rate, which is to say if you borrow or have $750 balance or $1,000 balance, you're paying interest on it. So you're losing money when your dollars are sleeping in a savings account because inflation is eating away at them and your debt is growing due to the interest rate. So what you have to do is actually grow your money faster than that interest rate is eating your money. So when you take out a loan, you generally need to make sure that that capital is active. And so, yes, developing products, I think is a good investment. Even if your product didn't sell, you'd be able to learn something that will benefit you over a lifetime and create a foundation for you to have financial freedom. Uh, so thank you very much for this question. And may everyone else be thankful that you asked that question. You put your own money to ask it and they get to hear the answer for free. You know, as men, we should be the most grateful persons anytime we get something for free, because truth be told, we don't really ever get anything for free. Um, that's why I'm always deeply thankful for everything that I receive. It's a good value. Uh, shout out to EJ. He comes in with tuition, writes, peace to the saints. Appreciate you. Um, shout out to Kendall. He writes, tuition for another lesson our father should have told us.